If no one thinks you're crazy, you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis, and thank you for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. Today, our guest is the author of the New York Times best-selling book, Motivation Manifesto, and founder of High Performance Academy. He's Brendan Bouchard. Let's listen in as he discusses the difference between passion and obsession and also covers some of the important questions we should be asking ourselves. Here's Brendan. There is a difference between passion and obsession. And high performers have obsession about the topic, right? They are obsessed about the topic in which they're trying to learn, master, grow into. And so that obsession is real. And I tell people the difference, here's how you know the difference between the two. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. They're stoked for you. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. Be passionate. Chase your passions. Everything. Like passion, 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 passion. Passion's good. Like the world's going to be like, yay, passion. Right? When you're obsessed, they're like, why you got to be so crazy? Why can't you be satisfied? Why do you always got to get things so perfect? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. So it's different. And it's like, I always tell people, if no one thinks you're crazy you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. You're not there yet. Because somebody in your life should say, man, you really care about this in like a crazy way. And when you get there, you know you found your thing. And not everybody everybody finds that. I think that's also why it's scary. Some people go, well, I'm passionate or I'm happy, but I don't really obsess about anything. You know, most people obsess about, you know, their shows on Netflix more than their life. I know people who obsess more about their, their, you know, thread count in their sheets at their house than they do about the impact they're making in the world. Because, you know, buying something or getting pulled into Netflix, being obsessed about something that gives you no feedback is not scary. A real obsession, like trying to make an impact in the world, you're getting feedback. You try to make a difference in somebody's life, they're going to tell you, that doesn't resonate with me, Brendan. You try to make a difference in a, a nonprofit. You try to change the world. You try to start something like this. And the views come or they don't come. There's feedback. And people are terrified. It's one of the four central fears we all have is rejection. We're terrified like to be rejected. And think about if you really want to make an impact, you're going to get a lot of judgment. You're going to get a lot of hate. And ultimately, you're going to get rejection. People are going to like just diss on you. People are going to say that's not good enough. People are going to say, who do you think you are? And people are so worried about that, that they stop. And so it's easier. Things that don't give you feedback. Watch Netflix, don't give you no feedback. It's easy. There's no disappointment there. Even if you don't like the show, what do you do? You just go on to the next show. There's no, there's no disappointment there. You know, I think trying to make an impact, there's a lot of disappointment and fear and potential for rejection. So people don't get obsessed about making a difference and making an impact because it can hurt. When you get that life is really short and you felt that before, either by you were threatened or you've had someone near, dear, near and dear die, but when you have that real essence in you that says life is short, have reverence for it, live it, that's a really big thing. I got that at 19 and I learned specifically that if we have a moment of cognition before the end of our life, we tend to ask questions to evaluate if we're happy. So if I have any impact in the world, it's going to come from that experience where I learned that the ultimate lesson is determine what the questions you're going to ask at the end of your life are going to be. Find out those questions. What will you ask at the end of your life to evaluate your life so that you would know if you were happy with your life? Like, Figure out those questions and then live each day intentionally so you're happy with the answers at the end. For me, the answers, the questions I had were, did I live, which I hadn't, I hadn't been living my life. I'd been thinking about taking my life. Did I love? No, my heart was broken. And I put up all these walls to keep out other people. And I always say, you know, sometimes the walls we put up 
to keep out the bad guys, prevent the good guys from getting in. And suddenly in our own self-protection, we block out the very thing we want, which is connection. And I learned that I would ask, did I matter? You know, 22 years ago, on a dark Caribbean night, I'm standing on the crumpled hood of a car, bleeding out. My friend and I just wrecked a car. He's screaming at the top of his lungs. He's bleeding. We don't know if we're going to live. And I'm standing on the hood of this car, looking down at all this blood, and I'm in terror. And I just remember looking down at the hood and just thinking, did I even matter? You know? And I hated the answer at that time in life. Because I'm a 19-year-old kid. I didn't know about impact theory. <laughs> For real. I didn't know to think about that. You, some, you know, young kids sometimes, they don't know to think about that. Mm. I didn't know to think about legacy, meaning. Did I matter? I didn't think I did. But the good news is, I'm a good learner. And I felt like I got a second chance from God that night. And I learned that it was really important for me to figure out how do I live and how do I love and how do I matter in such a way that if I face my death again, I'll know I've earned the second chance. And so what I want to tell people and the impact I want is I just want people to know, know your questions, man. Live intentionally and earn the life that you've been given because this moment's a blessing. So earn this moment and live intentionally. What a powerful way to keep yourself on track to achieve your goals. Get clarity about those questions and then go about your day and life in such a way that you'll be happy with your final answer. Thanks for listening.